through the efforts of Stargate Command, the nations of Earth were slowly made aware of their place within a complex and often threatening galaxy. Hostile alien civilizations, the Goa'uld system lords first among them, had likewise become aware of Earth and repeatedly tested its defenses and capabilities. During the initial years of this escalating conflict, the great fear that loomed over every effort was that these belligerent powers might bypass the Stargate network entirely and send their ships directly to Earth. While Stargate Command had proven adept at countering the Goa'uld and others on terrestrial battlefields against a ship in orbit, they had no reliable defense. Several close calls and near misses proved the immediacy of this threat, and a form of interstellar deterrence became the top priority for every nation aware of the Stargate program. The BC-304, or Daedalus class, is today the supreme accomplishment of this effort. Interstellar warships capable of not only the defense of Earth, but projecting power and protecting mankind's interests across the whole of the galaxy. Its deployment fundamentally transformed Earth's capabilities, enabling its nations to dictate the terms to powers who might otherwise overwhelm them. It is without exaggeration to say that no other asset within the operating forces of Stargate Command is as foundational to humanity's aspiration of interstellar civilization as the Daedalus class. Designated a battlecruiser by the United States Air Force, its primary operator, the BC-304, is designed to fulfill a variety of roles. These include reconnaissance in force, surface bombardment, and the deployment and supporting of SG teams or other terrestrial forces. Its principal duties, however, are focused on anti-ship space warfare, engaging the largest combatants within enemy fleets on as favorable terms as can be attained. At 650 meters long, 367 wide, and 135 tall, the BC-304 is significantly smaller than many of the ships it was designed to destroy. This, however, is the deliberate result of pursuing a high efficiency of space and rejecting many of the ceremonial and Baroque elements common on alien starships. The end result is a highly compact vessel based around a central angular hull flanked on either side by two prominent flight decks. Within can be found a wide array of facilities and modular mission bays, the latter capable of being quickly replaced as circumstances dictate. The bridge is located at the base of the ship's forward neck, with missile tubes, other armaments, and sensors extending to the vessel's bow. Cargo bays, engine rooms, auxiliary machine spaces, and crew quarters make up the rear of the central hull. A raised flight tower is also located here, often erroneously identified as the ship's bridge. On either side can be found the hangar decks, aerospace squadron complex, and observation rooms. Though an indigenous human design, many of the BC-304's more sophisticated technologies were gifted by the Asgard, humanity's closest ally and partner. These include an advanced sensor suite, matter transporters capable of short-range instantaneous travel, and a computer core that allows these systems to operate in conjunction with one another. Asgardian shields also constitute the ship's primary defense systems, one of the most advanced types of energy barrier in the known universe. Other alien technologies aboard included transportation rings derived from Goa'uld designs and zero-point modules created by the ancients that now power many of the ship's more intensive systems. The primary armament of a Daedalus-class battlecruiser is 16 missile cells, forming a vertical launch missile system. Each cell can hold one or more missiles, granting the ship the additional flexibility to load the best set of ordnance for any given mission. These most commonly contain the Mark III and Mark VIII tactical nuclear warheads. In special circumstances, however, VLS cells might also include a Mark IX Naquadria Enhanced Nuclear Missile, nicknamed Gatebusters, for their ability to destroy the otherwise impervious Stargates. Secondary armaments include an array of 32 railgun turrets dispersed across the ship. These are normally intended to function as a close-in weapon system, but have been known to inflict substantial damage against enemy vessels without active shields. In at least one instance, a Daedalus-class warship was also outfitted with the Horizon Weapon Delivery System, containing six Mark IX warheads and four decoys. 
Due to its special nature, the weapon was housed within the 304's bomb bay, located on the vessel's underside. The striking power of a BC-304 is further enhanced by its complement of F-302 fighter interceptors. This air wing is typically between 8 and 16 of such aerospace craft, each regularly equipped with their own missile systems, railguns, and at times, strategic weapons. Depending on the situation, they can be deployed to provide an escort for their native Daedalus, engage more distant targets, or provide support for Stargate teams. Other auxiliary craft known to be deployed from BC-304s include the Puddle Jumpers, obtained by Stargate Command's Atlantis Expedition. Beginning in 2007, as part of a fleet-wide modernization program, BC-304s were additionally equipped with Asgardian plasma beam weapons. These fired high-intensity beams of superheated plasma, and though lacking the raw destructive power of a Mark IX warhead, were capable of the highly precise and concentrated strikes most effective against shields and other energy barriers. The power of these beams could also be reduced to merely disable enemy vessels or damage specific components. To ensure the ship can quickly attain an advantageous position over the enemy, BC-304s are equipped with powerful sublight engines, able to accelerate the vessel to over half the speed of light. Anti-gravity pods and deceleration thrusters can likewise be utilized to achieve a limited atmospheric flight. Its hyperdrive was originally based on salvaged Goa'uld vessels and considered too unreliable for regular use. It was eventually supplemented and then replaced entirely by Asgard designs, making the Daedalus one of the fastest ships of its type. A trip between the Milky Way and Pegasus galaxies, when the hyperdrive is fully powered, can be accomplished in just over two weeks. In practice, the only real limit on how long a BC-304 can be deployed derives from the well-being of the ship's crew. To maintain the morale of its 200 personnel, ships of the class are equipped with spacious living quarters, recreational facilities, infirmaries, and comprehensive mess halls. Life support systems are similarly thorough, with multiple redundancies and a nine-hour window in which the ship can continue to function without them. Though not specifically designed to accommodate passengers, a larger crew complement is possible, though the life support will become less efficient as a result. The Daedalus class was first commissioned in 2005, replacing entirely the proposed fleet of BC-303 Prometheus-class battlecruisers. Though the earlier design proved itself quite capable, immense technological advances made over the course of the Prometheus' short lifespan made the continued production of the BC-303 impractical. The BC-304 represented a stark evolution over its predecessor, factoring alien technologies into the initial design, rather than retroactively incorporating them. It was far larger, and in every quantifiable way, far superior. The Daedalus fired its first shots in anger when the eponymous lead ship of the class was deployed to defend the city of Atlantis in the Pegasus Galaxy. In combat against the Wraith, one of the ancient powers of Pegasus, the 304 performed remarkably well, destroying two Hive ships, which up to that point had been largely invulnerable to conventional attack. The Odyssey, the second ship of the class, was completed the following year and proved equally capable against the Earth's traditional adversaries in the Milky Way. The Goa'uld attack class, which for nearly a decade had been one of the greatest threats to Stargate Command's operations and Earth itself, was essentially neutralized, with even multiple ships outclassed by a single 304. By 2009, the initial production run of the BC-304 had ended after six vessels. The United States of America operated the USS Daedalus, Odyssey, Apollo, and George Hammond. The latter initially ordered as Phoenix, but renamed to honor the passing of one of Stargate Command's most influential and foundational commanding officers, without whom the BC-304s would not have been possible. The People's Republic of China operated the Sun Tzu, while the Russian Federation briefly commanded the RFS Korolev, before its destruction during operations against the Ori. The Odyssey, owing to its status as Earth's flagship, was regularly upgraded during its initial deployments, though such refits would eventually extend across the whole of the fleet. The George Hammond, the last BC-304 to be completed, 
would alter its design to better accommodate these additions, featuring a larger superstructure and expanded hangars for its 302 fighter complement. Today, the efforts of Stargate Command and Homeworld Command, of which it is now a part, are dedicated mainly to the continued operation of the BC-304 fleet. While these powerful warships have in many cases supplemented or overtaken the traditional roles of the Stargate teams, they serve as almost living museums dedicated to the history of Earth's greatest successes and secrets. To walk their decks is to experience the history of the Stargate program itself. Every system, every device, the methods and procedures in which they operate, all can be traced back to lone SG teams operating on an alien world. It is easy to forget that in those early days, these personnel operated without any meaningful support. There was no fleet of mighty ships in orbit to call upon, only the dream that through their efforts and sacrifices, such a thing might one day be possible. In Arsenal, the Templin Institute investigates the weapons, vehicles, and other constructs from across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.